Why do some bugs sting and other insects bite? Why do some bugs crawl and other insects fly? If you have questions, there's no need to guess. We'll answer your bug questions on royal pests. Ask the entomologist. Why do spiders have eight legs? Don't all bugs just have six? How do bees make a buzz buzz sound and my doll be hurt by ticks? If you need info from an anthill to a nest, we'll answer your bug questions on Royal Pest. Ask the entomologist. Okay, welcome to Royal Pests Ask the Entomologist, where we answer questions about pests, all insects, great and small, and annoying. And today's show is going to show you disgusting. As always, I'm here with Royal Pest Entomologist Jess King. Hi, Jess. Good morning, Rick. And um, he's going to be our expert, answer our questions, and we're going to uh, have a subject today. What's our subject today, Jess? Bed bugs. All right. You ready to talk about bed bugs? Yep. All right. Um, we're talking about bed bugs because it's vacation time and people are sleeping in places, uh, hotels, motels, places that seem to have bed bugs and they've reemerged. But let's start from the beginning, Jess. What are bed bugs? Bed bugs are a, uh, they're a pest, obviously. Um, they, their Latin name is Cymex lectularius. They're a small, flat, parasitic insect that feeds on, uh, solely on the blood of people and animals when they sleep. They detect heat and carbon dioxide coming from an animal and uh, they're able to locate their blood meal that way. They're small, reddish brown in color. They're wingless. They range in size from one millimeter to seven millimeters, depending on how um, old they are. Mm -hmm. Essentially, they go through stages of development. Um, so they, they're small. They're roughly the size of Lincoln's head on a penny. That's that's one way to think of it. And they can live several months without a blood meal. These things, um, up to a year. It they're has that been big. Documented. They're as big as Lincoln's head on a penny. I thought I always heard apple seed. Apple, apple seed is very common, yeah, but if you get a full blown adult that's engorged with blood, then uh yeah, they can be they can be pretty large. All right, now you said they're wingless, so they don't fly? Don't fly. No, they don't fly. They just crawl around um and and hide. Yeah, how do they get up on the top of a bed? Well, there's a couple ways. Um sometimes they live in a bed, you know, um but they, they, they crawl up. They crawl up the posts of the bed, and they'll get into the seams of the mattress or the box spring. Um, but it's all by crawling. Okay, so they're good climbers then. Yeah, they're very good climbers. I have seen, as weird as this sounds, I, well, I've heard of uh, cases where they've crawled up onto a ceiling uh -huh. and dropped from the ceiling the down commando on. Commando bugs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're parachuting out of the ceiling, yeah, down onto their host. God, and you'd think that somebody would feel them to land on them like that huh no nah, they, they as a matter of fact they don't spend too much time on the host um i mean they they can i've seen you know we've walked into apartment complexes and the person that answered the door had bed bugs crawling on their neck so i mean they can be on the host but oftentimes they're hanging off of the sheet and and hanging off and 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 biting the person all right so then that's going to take us to our next question because they're called bed bugs so we know they're in beds mm -hmm. but uh, they are good hiders and uh, found all over the place yeah. yeah well give me some examples of where you find bed bugs because you do a lot of bed bug inspections yeah well i don't travel the world extensively but they can be found worldwide you know mm -hmm. north america south america africa asia uh europe all over the places where you will find bed bugs um Although the presence has traditionally been seen as a problem in developing countries, it recently has been spreading rapidly in parts of the United States and other developed countries. They, uh, so you can find them all over the world. Bed bugs have been found in five-star hotels. They've been found in uh, low-income housing. It's not a. It's not, you know, a. Um, it's not determined by the cleanliness of the living condition. That's not where you know something that would determine where you would find them. So I'm, what what I'm trying to tell you is they can be found everywhere, but they hide like you're talking about in little cracks and crevices. That's where I want to go, like in a room. Mm -hmm. Where are you where are you are you going to find bed bugs? They hiding? usually occur around or near areas where people are sleeping. You know, um, they're nocturnal in nature, so they're going to um, they're going to be active at night. 
and again, they scent you by your heat and your carbon dioxide. So they start crawling around, um, but they're, they're hiding in little cracks and crevices like the tufts of the mattresses, the seams of the mattresses, the seams of the box springs, the frame to the bed, the headboard. You want me to go on and on? Yeah, no, I, okay. I, because... Because this uh, will help people. I think this will help people. We'll get to an inspection later in the show, but I think for now, just the fact that I'll they, tell you some they hot are spots. just in bed. Yeah, some hot spots. Um, the, the picture behind the, the bed, you know, in the hotel, every, everybody's got this picture yeah, right. behind the bed. There's and it's drilled to the wall. Yeah, you it's thinking, You can't even move wall. it anyway. You can't get that off, but they like to hide behind there. Um, they like to hide behind the face plates for... Um, outlets mm -hmm. and light switches um in the lamps in the alarm clocks in the sprinkler systems in the draperies in or so it's just boards. hiding because it's undisturbed it's not hiding because there's heat in an alarm clock or they have tactile sensory so anything where there's in a little crack and they have um you know they feel protected on one side of their body and the other side the side of their body that's generally where you're going to find them that's what's been successful over generations you know the bed bug that was out in the middle of the bed got smushed and didn't reproduce but the one hiding in the crack was able to survive and pass on those genetics so that's what they all do are they uh, when they're hiding behind a picture on a wall is that a place where they can reproduce or is it basically in the bed that like no, they can reproduce. Yeah, yeah right. it's got to be. Don't, they don't have to they be in a bed. bed. No. Nah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Nope. Um, you started to say that uh, they're all around the world, but mm -hmm. it seems like in the United States they've really just popped up again a lot. Do you have any explanation for why we're starting to see them all over the United States again? Well, they've they've been present just at very low levels. Um, there, this is keep in mind this is the most cryptic insect anybody's going to come up against in pest control. I mean, it, it exceeds the termite. It's very cryptic in its biology. Um, they're experts at hiding. They have these slim, flat bodies that allow them to fit into that small place like that crack or crevice. So a lot of times they go unnoticed. But it is true that they weren't such a problem over the past, uh, you know, prior to 10 years ago, say. It wasn't, wasn't too much of a problem. In the United States, we used DDT. A chemical for uh, right. pest control, and uh, well, not just in the United States; it was used around the world. Yeah, and well, I'm just talking about here, and uh -huh. you know, in the United States, it was widely used, and that um, that really had an effect on the bed bug. You know, bed bugs weren't able to survive because that DDT was a, um, a residual chemical and and uh, killed bed bugs. Mm -hmm. There's also a little bit more travel nowadays between. Um, developing countries and the united states so we're getting a lot of um people that may be bringing bed bugs with them from from other countries so bed bugs are a problem in other countries they just don't see them as a problem like we do i've heard some crazy things honestly about uh pest control in other countries um i've heard yeah because they are a problem they are they are a significant problem in other countries but i, I just want to tell you i've heard things like uh hotels in other countries their version of pest control is to send in people that are willing to be bitten by bugs because they after they get bit they kind of sit for about four days and so they'll send somebody in to get bitten by bed bugs and then the bed, bed bug will go hide and digest the blood meal and they'll send executives in after that person has been bit to reduce the chances that the executive will get bit while staying in this hotel. because the bed bugs are full yeah that's somebody's version of pest control not uh, not ours at royal no we don't handle it that way <laughs> no we, sir we do handle it uh actually in a plain and friendly way and in a way that we do a, a material i guess that there's would, a protocol you know, there's a yeah. protocol and a procedure for bed bugs and right. it's it's extremely thorough all right well i don't want to get too into that yet we'll do that at the very end of the show but you started talking about that it's not a cleanliness issue you can get them everywhere and We've gotten some calls at some pretty odd places and talking about the cultural part of it. We do um, – there's places we do that has a lot of international people. There's a, a, you know, a complex that we work on where some of them, the bed bugs aren't even a big deal to them. Yeah, I'm – I'll tell you this. I mean, I'll just give you some real-life experiences. I'm dealing with a place um, where it's infested with bed bugs and the – there's a lot of preparation that takes place in, in treating bed bugs. The homeowner has to do quite a bit of preparation, depending on the type of treatment that you're going to provide. Um, 
But if you're going to do a traditional chemical application, um, conventional treatment for bed bugs, there's a lot of preparation. It's almost like moving out of your house. You have to bag up everything, everything washable, non-washable, everything's got to be removed. And I got a situation right now where someone says, I'll be able to get that accomplished in about 90 days. Yeah. So they're living with bed bugs. They're fine with living with bed bugs. And they, they give us a timeline that will accomplish that within 90 days. So there's a lot of obstacles in, in this uh, treatment. Sometimes. Yeah, and, and we provide these checklists for people that pe they really have to be prepared for us to come in and do it. Absolutely. you have to expose all the hiding places. And really, I can't come in to do a treatment and, and say, I knew this wasn't going to work, but I did it anyway. You nah, know, they we weren't fully prepared, but I, I, so it's very, very important. The preparation process is extremely, it's critical. It's vital to the success right. of the movie theaters, taxi cabs, Victoria's Secrets got closed down up in New York one time. One of our ex-presidents had them. Yeah, had, yeah right. Um, so who's at risk at getting bed bugs? Everybody, mm -hmm. everybody. Um, you just have to be diligent, really, um. You know, any place where you can go and sit in the public, you're at risk, honestly. Um, now, the probability is higher when you're in places where people are sleeping, you know, and they, they sit in one spot for a long period of time, long waiting rooms. <laughs> you, know, <to laughs> you just were uh, Yeah, I stand. <laughs> <laughs> I stand. You I don't are sit. the bug guy who doesn't like bugs. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, no, I have to be conscious of it. I mean, it's something where I go to those places where I know they are, and I don't want to bring them home. So, I, I, you know, to be honest, if you wanted to make sure that you weren't going to bring them with you or even if you were getting your home treated and and you wanted to leave the the – you have to treat it almost like an Ebola virus if you wanted to cover every aspect, every possibility of, you know, getting bed bugs. You told me a, a funny story. When I f met Jess, and it was one of the first times I met Jess, uh, I, I see him come in and he's scrubbing his arms. He's like <laughs> washing his hands, scrubbing his arms, lathering up because I was marketing director and I'm meeting with the, the guys. And I'm like, what's up with him? He goes, he just did a bed bug inspection. And he goes, where do you see what I do with my clothes? You don't even bring your clothes home, right? They nah, neighbor's got a show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I take everything off, yeah, before I come inside. Yeah, but you go yeah. to laundromats and do that laundry. Yeah, I go to the laundromat. And a lot of people would think, you know, the laundromat? What the heck? You're running risk of getting something from the laundromat. But listen, if you, dry every, if you wash everything on high heat and you dry everything on high heat, the bed bug cannot survive. You just have to make sure you take it right from that dryer and put it right into a sealed bag. Don't put it up on that shelf and fold your clothes. Yeah, that was amazing. Laundry. He does his laundry before he goes home. So, all right, well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about uh, bed bug bites because they do bite you, and they have a very unique way of biting you, and we're going to talk about the health risks of uh, bed bugs. So uh, stick with us, and we'll be right back. Pests. Mice, rats, and bats can carry diseases, spread bacteria, contaminate your food, and trigger allergies. Rodents can chew through wallboards, wood, even electrical wiring. Royal Pest Solutions technicians can find and eliminate ways these pests get in. We'll bait around your home to keep pests outside and show you what you can do to help prevent them from getting inside. Royal Pest Solutions, planet-friendly pest control. The guys with the butterfly. We're back with Royal Pests, Ask the Entomologist. Um, we're talking about bed bugs, and we're with Royal Pest Entomologist Jess King. Bed bugs bite. And uh, Jess, can you explain the process of how a bed bug will bite someone and uh, why they do it? Yeah, well, it's hard to tell if you've been bitten by a bed bug unless you find, unless you find the bed bugs or signs of the infestation, you know, um, the bites can look like other bites sometimes, especially like a mosquito bite. And in fact, when the bed bugs bite, they inject an anesthetic and an anticoagulant um, into the person that prevents a person from realizing that they've even been bitten. So it's not like you feel these things. It's not a sting. It's a you know a subtle, subtle thing that happens. So they numb you like a dentist and then bite yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, it's a yeah, it's a an anesthetic and an anticoagulant. So it, it's not like the blood's going to be pouring out of you. You're not going to feel the the pierce of your skin. They have piercing, sucking mouth parts. Mm -hmm. A lot of bugs have chewing mouth parts, um, but this this bug, like a like a stink bug, also has a piercing, sucking mouth part. In fact, they're they're part of the same order. 
hemiptera. Um, so it's a piercing, sucking mouth part, punctures your skin, but you don't feel it. Some people don't even have reactions from it. Um, most people don't realize they've been bitten until the marks appear. Um, it can happen anywhere from, you know, immediately up to a several days before the symptoms come to the surface of the skin from that bite. Is, is there any kind of a pattern to their bites? Yeah, a lot of times you see them together. You see a couple bites together. And uh, the reason for that is, say, the bug's hanging off of a sheet and it's it, it pierces your skin and you roll. Mm -hmm. It'll pull its mouth part out and put it back in again. So sometimes you see them very close together, a couple bites. Oh, so that's the same bug then? Yes. Yep. It's not like they come in a swarm? Yep. Sometimes they're random, but yeah, a lot of times they're in a little straight line and it's all from that one bug. It's not a bunch of bugs at one site doing multiple uh, bites. Will they hit you from the first part of your body that they find, or are they more looking for your torso? First part of the, yeah, accessible part of your body. Yeah. I mm. mean, wherever they can get it, they can get their mouth part into your skin. Does it matter if you have clothes on or pajamas? Or? Yeah, it would help, but I mean, it's not going to completely protect you from an infestation they can get up under your clothing and hang off your clothing onto your skin or can they bite through clothing no i haven't seen them bite yeah. through clothing like that no. yeah. so if we wrap ourselves up real nice and but tight. the minute i say that there'll be a bed bug <laughs> you know article out that somebody got bit through clothing or yeah. something but not to my knowledge well what then I, I would guess then the most common place people get bit are legs and arms or if you really is no common place. Yeah, it's really random. no common place. I mean, most of the pictures you're going to see online are from arms, but that's because most of the pictures are um, entomologists that are rearing bed bugs, and they put them in a little jar and they stick them on their arm to feed them because they got to keep them alive. So, I mean, because they die without a blood meal. Entomologists right? just go let them feed on themselves? Or some other willing so yeah <laughs> but a lot of the wow. time that's an entomologist that's rearing bed bugs they're raising bed bugs and uh they're doing studies on them and to keep them alive they have to eat so how much blood do they take out every time not a whole lot i'm not uh, yeah i'm not yeah. really exactly sure what the amount is it would depend on how long it had its uh mouth part in your skin and you know whether you disturb the bug but it'll fill up its its abdomen and you'll see it it uh the red through the uh, through the exoskeleton. All right, they actually get their fill and then leave, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's stick with health on this segment because uh, <laughs> there's just so many darn things we could talk about with these bugs. All right, so you're telling me entomologists, people who raise them, might actually let them bite them. Mm -hmm. Do they worry about a disease or getting any kind of infection? No, nah, they should not be considered as a medical or public health hazard. Bed bugs are not known to spread disease. There is a study, recent study, um, where there was a concern that they may be spreading um, MRSA, mm -hmm. you know, um, staph infections. Right. Yeah, and I've heard that. Yeah, and that's not something that's coming from inside the uh, the, the the bed bug. It's usually something that's um, well, from what I believe, anyway, I believe that that's usually from something where the bed bug has bitten somebody and the person sits there and scratches it and it festers and, and you know, that becomes an open wound that could then get secondary infection from staff. Okay, so they're not like a mosquito that could pick up, let's say, a West Nile virus biting one person, getting their blood, and then going and biting someone else and transmitting it. No, they're they not. They don't do any transmission. Bed bugs are not considered dangerous in the transmission of, of disease. Nope. What about any health risks? What health risks do they pose? An allergic reaction um, can happen to several bites, um, and that may need medical attention. You know, some people may have an allergic reaction and go into anaphylaxis. Would it be an allergic reaction? The only thing they're injecting is something that's numbing people. Is that something that might have some toxicity to it? There may be, you know, but... Um, yeah, it's it's the allergic reaction to the to the bite itself, you know, probably to the chemicals that are going into your body. All right, so they never do any kind of a blood transfer from one person to another. No, nah, there's no that. there's no blood to blood. All right, but then they they all bulk up then with all this blood. Uh -huh. How did they get out? How did they get out of the bed so fast? I mean, it's supposed to be tough to move. They're skinny little things. They're pretty fast, actually. Yeah. You know, I mean, relative relative to a lot of insects, they're not super fast, but you know, they're not. Uh, not as slow as an ant. They're gonna they're gonna get up and crawl away pretty quick. I guess they also work under cover of darkness mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. 
So now, do they have since they're always what? not all the time? Because I, I tell you, I've been out and and seen them active in the daytime plenty. Oh, okay. Yeah, I severe infestations. The they're 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 active day and night under severe infestations. Yep. We're going to take another quick break to greet our guests and to get set for our final segment. And our final segment is going to be. I'm going to give everybody my phone number and email. So that, really? Yeah, so I can um, go along with them to all their exotic trips to all these great destinations. Uh, so that you want to take some free vacations, I get you, and you'll do the inspections. Huh? I'll do all your inspections for you, and I'll have to qualify where you're going and see if it's necessary. Oh, boy. Well, we no. are going to teach you, if nothing else, how to do the inspection yourself if you can't afford to bring Jess along with you. Yes, I'll give you um, – I'm going to give people tips for when they travel, how to check uh, their hotel or motel or wherever they're staying. Um and their rooms for bed bugs and what they can do to make sure they don't bring bed bugs home with them. Okay, great. We'll be back with Royal Pests, Ask the Entomologist, in about a minute. Bugs, cockroaches, flies, and mosquitoes can spread disease. Termites, carpenter bees, and ants can destroy your home. Stink bugs, spiders, whatever else will crawl around your home are just plain annoying. Royal Pest Solutions provides effective commercial and residential pest control using planet-friendly integrated pest management to protect people and property from harmful and destructive pests. Royal Pest Solutions, planet-friendly pest control. The guys with the butterfly. It's Royal Pest, Ask the Entomologist with uh, Royal Pest Entomologist Jess King. We're wrapping up the bed bug show and... Uh, Jess, what can we do to avoid being bitten by bed bugs when we travel? Clues when determining if bed bugs have been infested in the area. That's what you guys are looking for. Um, these signs include the bed Wait, bugs. Wait, it sounds like you're reading here, Jess. Yeah. All right. Well, because this is very, this is very, is very important very... stuff. I mean, the, you have to understand we're going to be looking for exoskeletons after the bed bug molts. It's exoskeleton. We're going to be looking for the actual bed bug in the folds of mattresses, sheets, or cracks and crevices, up to typically 20 feet from, from where someone would be sleeping or a host. All right, take me through it. Looking. I'm excited. I just got to my destination. I'm down in the shore. I want to go get right. ready for the beach. I walk in. I got my bags in my hand. Take me through the process. What do I do when I come into my room? You got to know what you're looking for, and that's that's what I'm trying to cover first. You want to you're, you're going to be looking for the exoskeletons. You're going to be looking for the the actual bed bug. You're going to be looking for little fecal matter, little little drops. They're rusty colored blood spots because their their uh, excrement is is blood. So um, you're also going to be sometimes looking for a sweet musty odor you know some people say that you can kind of smell the bed bug infestation if it's heavy heavy but if it was heavy heavy you wouldn't be worrying about smelling a sweet smelling odor you'd be seeing them all over the place at that point um so you you enter in your hotel room and those are the things that you got to do a little research prior to going out there and and figure out what these things look like that i was just describing you go into your hotel you want my version or you want a normal person's version? <laughs> no, I want a normal person's version because we're talking to normal people okay, here, not people who are experts. I don't even that... bring my stuff in anymore. To be honest, I just leave it in the car and I go change out in the car. and, and It's it's the pain. And if you're bringing your family, it's unrealistic. So I give you the – Right. You know, give me normal a normal person who version. has to bring their family, has to unpack their bags, put them somewhere, has to take dirty laundry home. Give me a normal version of what somebody should do. They get to the door, they open the door, they have this research done. Mm -hmm. How do they do an inspection of their hotel room? What do they start? Okay, take your stuff and leave it in the car first if you can. Before you enter into your hotel room, there's no sense in bringing all your stuff in there if, if it's a possibility of infestation. If you have to bring your stuff with you, you didn't drive a car to the hotel, you got dropped off or whatever, um, bring some trash bags with you. Three mil trash bags are the ones I recommend because they don't rip as easy as a little um, kitchen trash bag. Mm -hmm. Three mil trash bag, like a lawn bag, put your suitcases in there and keep them in the bathtub of your, of your bathroom in your hotel room while you do your inspection. It's not as though that... They're not going to be in the bathtub, but look, at a percentage kind of deal, you, you want to, you know, um, reduce your risk. And they're not as likely to be in the bathtub, you know, as they are in the in the bed, gotcha. right, around the bed. So put your stuff in there, put it in the bathtub, in the sealed bag. Take a high-powered flashlight with you. Not the old, uh, 
you know, the old household flashlight, mm-hmm. the yellow light with a dim bulb on it that you can't see anything, get the good ones. They got they're cheap nowadays for the LED flashlights. Get one of those and uh go into your room and take apart the bed first. That's a great place to start. Pull back the sheets carefully and slowly, looking for the things that we described, the exoskeletons, the fecal drops, the um the live insects, or maybe even dead insects. And and pull back the sheets and look on the ribbing of the mattress. Um and pull back the seam and look under that as well. I mean, you're looking in the tiniest of cracks and crevices. So sheets, that. bed cover thing, that fitted sheet, everything. Just pull it right up. Yeah, pull it back slowly. Look at everything. You know, keep that in a little pile. Don't throw them all over the room. Don't create, you know, more trouble for yourself. Keep them in a nice small uh, pile. Look through the mattress. Take the mattress off. Look at the box spring. Now, you're talking, you know, a lot of work sometimes, but if you feel like it, if you're up to it, take the box spring, lift that up too, and look at the frame to the bed. All the cracks and crevices, even the little screw holes in that bed. You know, sometimes they have recessed screw holes in there, oftentimes is where we find them, but that's oftentimes also the place that people say, I don't got to look in there. That is where you have to look. You have to look in those really small places. So, the bed is where you want to start. And you kind of want to just radiate out away from the bed, checking um, the headboard, like we talked about earlier, checking the nightstand, the telephone, the alarm clock, the light. Again, all the cracks and crevices on those on those items. Um, The picture on the wall we mentioned, the baseboards around the bed, the cove base is usually what they have in the hotels or, you know, they have nice wood molding. The. The bed bugs sometimes will go underneath the carpet. Don't pull the carpet back. You know, you get in a lot of trouble if you rip it off a tack strip or something. But sometimes they can be deep underneath that carpet, underneath the carpet pad even. So you may not find them. You could go into a room where you could do a thorough visual inspection and not find them. I mean, it it can happen. When you shine the flashlight on them, are they like cockroaches that they'll start to run? and nah. get, No, the nah. light doesn't affect them at all. No, nope. easily visible. And sometimes they're in little clusters. They, they have an aggregatory pheromone, so they, they like to hang out all in a little group, which suggests, you know, maybe they live in a colony. They do not live in a colony. They mm-hmm. don't communicate with each other, um, you know, strategically in a colony. But sometimes they're found together because what's a conducive place for one is a conducive place for another. Not They're just... Bugs. All right, so you conscious decisions. You check the bed. You start at the bed, which makes the most sense. Probably the foot. Then you go to the header. Then you start to radiate out. Yep. Te- check the wheels of the bed. Check the base. Check, where the, probably that, you got to put your clothes in a drawer. Would they ever be hiding in a drawer? Yeah, I recommend don't use the drawer. I recommend keep your stuff in a suitcase and put it on your luggage rack after you thoroughly inspect your oh, luggage okay, rack. So not go into the drawers then. Yeah, I wouldn't even use the drawers nowadays. They do. Uh, there, there are products that you can purchase that are uh, bed bug proof bags there's garment bags and there's also bags that you can put your suitcase in and it makes the life a little easier um they're clear they have s- uh, zippers that are specifically designed to keep bed bugs out mm-hmm. um so they're very they're very useful when you are living in a hotel to live out of those bags another thing to look for that um popped in my head when we were talking about baseboards wear rubber gloves on your inspection and it sounds strange, nitrile gloves, something like that, disposable gloves that you would use for cleaning your kitchen or something. Wear those because, look, you may not know that the, bed, the, the room was treated before for bed bugs. And you're going to be digging through a lot of stuff looking for these things. And there may be residual chemicals that are out there that were designed to kill the bed bug. And you don't want to just be digging around and all that stuff and, and you know, getting it on you if you don't have to. All right. So I I would recommend that. And another thing that you're going to be looking for is a dust. A lot of pest control companies like to use a dust in the voids to kill the bed bugs or in the cracks and crevices. And some of these pest control companies, not Royal, but some of these pest control companies out there don't apply it perfectly all the time. And you can see the dust sitting right on surfaces. So that's also a sign that this place has had a bed bug infestation at some point. And you know, you don't want to touch that stuff. Yeah, or at least wash your hands real thoroughly when you're done doing this type of an inspection. Yeah, soap and water. Wash your hands yep. with soap and water. All right, real quickly, because uh, we're running out of time, but I do want to find out, you've done all this precaution. You didn't think there were any bed bugs in there, but mm-hmm. they still can get in while you're there. How do you prevent bringing them home? What are some suggestions we can give about not bringing bed bugs home with you? Reduce the amount of stuff that you bring with you on your trip. 
Okay. Not, Boy, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah, you try to get that. Yeah, <laughs> that's not going to go over well with some <laughs> yeah. folks. They like to bring some wives. tons and tons and tons of luggage. But reduce what you bring. You know, reduce the kids' toys. If you're bringing beach toys with you, keep them in the car if you brought your car there. Don't bring those in and out of the hotel room. Um, it's just more stuff that you're going to have to inspect. When you get home, you're going to want to take everything out one by one out of your suitcases outside in your driveway away from your car away from your garage away from your home take things out one by one inspect them thoroughly if it's a washable item you can put these washable items right into sealed bags a matter of fact we provide a travel kit for mm -hmm. for bed bugs um, but you can put them right into sealed bags that are dissolvable all your washable items put them in a sealed bag take it inside put it in the in the washer wash it on high heat the bag will dissolve, take everything out of the washer, put it right in the dryer, dry it on high heat, dead bugs if there were any in there now. So you know that you're not bringing anything in with you. It's, um, but it's, it's about being diligent and about doing a thorough inspection on each individual item that you bring out of your bag. And uh, there are some units that are designed nowadays to treat non-washable items, some heat units. Um, if you bring the bed bug up to temperatures above 122 degrees, they're going to they're not going to survive. So sometimes just throw them in the dryer even if you don't get a chance to wash it. Heat is a great tool. Heat's Heat is a great, a great tool. tool. And then there's also some sprays like we provide a rest easy spray where you can spray the seams of your luggage to kill any of the bed bugs if they were in there. All right. Well, good. I think you made uh, a lot of people feel a little bit safer as they go into these places. At least they have a little control over it. Yeah. Or I can go with them on the trip. <laughs> or just yeah. take a trip to you to any <laughs> exotic location. Okay, well, um, that wraps up our show. Before we go, though, if you go to royalpest.com, we do have a downloadable page of bed bug travel tips. Um, just go to royalpest.com and search bed bug travel, kit, tra travel tips, and it'll give you different areas to inspect, a lot of the stuff that just talked about, and even some of the product that if you want to take with you, we have that. Um, thanks to Royal Pest Entomologist Jess King, once again, for sharing his knowledge on insects and other pests. Do you have an insect question for Royal Pest Entomologist Jess King? Go to royalpest.com and click on the Ask the Entomologist logo. Or just post your questions on the WAMD Facebook page. For a free pest inspection to protect your home and family from annoying and destructive insects and pests, call Royal Pest at 800-ROYAL-PEST or visit royalpest.com. Royal Pest Planet Friendly Pest Control. The guys with the butterfly.